In August 2004, Adam Curry launched his show, Daily Source Code. I've never heard of it, and I'm sure you haven't either. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Fervent Four. Did you know that only one, two, three, four percent of businesses ever cross the annual million dollar revenue mark? Revenue mark. I also cannot speak. Hello, I'm Zach Miller, author of Anomaly. With me today, I have my co host, Tim Ryan, lead man at startwheel.org. Thank you so much for joining us. The Fervent Four is a weekly show each and every Thursday at 11 a.m. dedicated to sharing insights into growing a world-class business no matter the climate. Do you guys like it when I speak uh, faster or slower? I can't tell. Podcast 17 years later are way easier to start, produce, and listen to than even just five years ago. This form of media is capitalizing on one's earbuds on the daily insert eric thomas lead man at rival digital no it's not a podcasting company but a digital marketing firm specializing in hvac who uses this 17 year buzz to well help them get buzz eric welcome to the show hey thanks for having me how's it going eric hey zach hello uh i think we're having Adam MTV Curry. So Adam I just Curry? is what is that Adam Curry? Who who's Adam Curry? I have no idea. I looked up what was oh. the first podcast. That what when was the first podcast ever created or something like that? And what came up according to the internet was this guy Adam Curry, and the show was something like what did I say it was called? Uh, Daily, Daily Source Code. You know, it sounds like it was some sort of techie that uh, created something. And I don't I don't know where you guys were on the whole podcast thing, but I remember trying to start one like in 10, 11, 2011, 2010, something like that. Difficult as crap to do then. And even in like 14, it was still pretty difficult. And so it, it's interesting how we use a tool now called StreamYard super easy to record to then just take the audio file and upload that somewhere else where i often times feel like people forget like how far we've moved and how quickly we've been able to do that because you see like um even just like how big a terabyte used to be and now you can get a terabyte that's like the size of your fingernail i mean it's dude if you want to hear a uh, crazy story about history of podcasting listen to uh tom green on joe rogan that tom green? Guys, yeah he was like one of the pioneers he's like the the podcast or og grandfather i mean he was like they had no idea that they were going to get the audience that they were going to get and next thing you know they were getting uh hosting bills for like 100 a hundred thousand dollars because back then you, there wasn't broadband and you had to tap into a server and actually pay for the bandwidth that you were using and, and so, your customers using, yeah, and uh, so oh, so it was rolling on. It was rolling on their own websites, and then the bandwidth had the right. And he had servers set up in his house and Cat Five running all over the place. It, it, it's worth a listen to. It's it just to hear how far things have come since those days. It, that's mind blowing. I, I like. I like. I don't even know really what to say to that. Like it's, it's. There's so much content now. There's so many people doing things. And so just to just to think back, and we're just another, you know, we're just another TV show on another channel. That's how I look at this stuff. And it, it's just mind-boggling to look at some of these pioneers. I think historically people would probably say someone like a um um uh, Joe Rogan, you know, is the pioneer of this. And maybe he made this stuff big, but to hear like a uh, you know, a story about Tom Green like that, because Tom Green was huge at one point, or just that Adam Curry was the man way back when no relation likely to Steph Curry. I have no idea. I just made that up. Uh, maybe he likes curry food, you know, just making a lot of assumptions here. That's, that's what we do here on ZachStatsNation.com. Not a website should be, but it's cool to just, just, just see stuff like that. Is is Eric hasn't has Eric has literally said like one word and this is <laughs> we're five this, minutes deep. I love it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Let's, let's see. Okay. He's three. We're three words in. Let's see if we can get another five minutes deep without him saying a word. Here we go. I'll, I'll prompt the next the next conversation. Uh, RSS feeds. 
is that so what is so uh let's just think about what is a podcast in general right so a podcast is literally just running off of a, an rss feed yeah right well see it used to be where like you would record the episode you would get the audio upload it to itunes or whatever it was back then and then some rascal on on LimeWire would go download it for free or whatever. And then they would put it on their MP3 player and then they would listen to it in the car or on their headset. But like you had limited space on those MP3 players. So why would, why would anyone waste their space on a podcast really? Um, so podcasting, like you said, didn't really take off until 2015, 2016 when uh, people started being able to actually stream episodes as they came out directly to, a particular platform like Spotify or Apple podcasts and whatnot. Um, and so RSS feeds make that easy. And, you know, that was really the big challenge was being able to manually update the RSS feed versus you've got these, these tools now like Podbean and Buzzsprout and um, pocket cast. There's a gazillion of them where you just upload the MP3 and it takes care of all that legwork for you. And the crazy thing is, is that uh, we're still very much in the infancy state of podcasts. I mean, it's uh, mm-hmm. it's almost like we're in podcast 2.0. Back what we were talking about just a second ago was the or the origination, and now it's yeah. as uh, Spotify and Apple start to compete for uh, market share and all that. That's kind of like the we're experiencing the 2.0, and you know, so now we're it's it's the next wave. What? Uh, how long have you been in the podcast game, Eric? Uh, I'd say probably about a year now. Um, so before listening and producing. No, oh, listening. I've been listening to podcasts for probably since 2016. Uh, mm-hmm. I think 20, maybe 2015 when I first got Spotify, uh, like the premium version, I started listening to some on there, uh, very limited back then to what you could listen to. Cause you know, like we were saying, it wasn't a huge, really a huge thing in 2015, even on Spotify. Um, and so there was, there was a few shows that you could listen to. Um, I started picking them up a little bit more later on after college. You know, when I graduated in 2017, I began listening to them pretty much every day. There's several podcasts I listen to now. Um, uh, and I know like exactly when they're going to come out and I listen to them right as they drop. Um, but I started recording podcasts about a year ago. Um, I started one for fun uh, that kind of just sparked out of a hobby of mine from like woodworking. Uh, I started a podcast called The Artisan Order, uh, which I think we could go ahead and classify that one as pod faded and no longer in existence. Um, but it was very similar to my podcast now where I was interviewing, um, I guess you could say influencers in the woodworking space on like Instagram and YouTube um, and just talking to them about becoming content creators and all that stuff. Um, and then when I started rival or when we, we got rival off the ground, we were like, we got to start a podcast because that's, you know, that's where it's at. Um, and so we've been in with doing the smart HVAC marketing podcast now for since December, 2020. So right at seven months with our podcast, Zach changed into his rival digital hat. I appreciate it. It's very on brand. Uh, and <laughs> And we are at 54 episodes now um, with the Smart HVAC Marketing Podcast. Are you stuck at your home office, socially distanced coffee shop, or your fancy all bricked out corner office wondering why no one can see your business and sales are all over the place? Sounds like you need a pro. That's why I developed the Anomaly Academy. Insert clever copy here. Oh, I guess I was supposed to something else there. Oops. You can grab access to the Anomaly Academy now at ZachMillerSays.com slash Anomaly Academy. 